Mr. Olusemusheke, the Nigerian industrialist. Mr. Olusemusheke, the big Nigerian industrialist. <laughs> big man. A bigger man with a bigger car. Next year, I'll probably have a bigger car myself. Yeah. Part of Mr. Shurige's own six year development plan. Everything's getting bigger the building, the city, the traffic. That's progress. Up and up like the skyline, changing all the time. Growing all the time. The country, the town, Nigeria, we are all changing. And here's where Mr. Shurege gets to work. The West African Coal Storage Company of Nigeria. WACS for short. I get plenty of exercise here, that's for sure. How many thousand times have I climbed these stairs since we opened the new building? But it's climbing to get somewhere. The most up-to-date food factory in West Africa, they said. And you are distribution manager, Mr. Shurige. Big job. Lawson. The distribution manager calls his clerk, and another day begins. Son of Modupe and Ayodele of Abekuta, Ola Shegun Shoege graduated Bachelor of Science in Economics at Ibadan University. Then he started his training with the United Africa Company, and now at 32, he's one of the group of managers who run this factory. And you don't get that sort of job by luck. Bacon and beef, meat pies and sausages. That's what the factory makes. It takes the best meat in Nigeria, and turns it into tasty, nourishing foods. Some of them new to our tables. People want new foods. It's part of our new way of life. New customers, satisfied customers. That's good for trade. And not only WACS is trade. The factory provides work for other factories, packaging materials, delivery vans, flour mills, oil producers. More wages for more people, more trade for more people. So every new enterprise stimulates other industries. Like when you throw a stone into a pool, the ripples spread out all around, far and wide. Beyond the rainforest, hundreds of miles from Lagos northward, through the ancient cities of the plain. But today, these ancient cities are changing. New sounds are being heard in the marketplace. For side by side with the old craft, modern industry is now established. Textiles, cement, tobacco, chemical. More wages for more people, more trade for more people. And the ripple of expansion spreads. Another industry is booming. Cattle. Today, that factory down on the coast buys meat from the north. From the great northern herds, three quarters of a million cattle are sold every year. Seven and a half million pounds worth of beef, nearly half to the markets of the south. To help the cattle men, the federal government runs three veterinary research stations. One at Rome on the Joss Plateau in the northern region. Here, constant experiment goes on to improve both beef and dairy cattle. And in the fields and cattle stores, farming techniques and management are being studied and developed for the benefit of all.
crossbreeding carried on with imported bulls encourages higher standards of cattle rearing. Standards essential to an industry producing high quality meat food. Two undertaken, a factory and an experimental farm, 800 miles apart, but with a common interest. Another important part of the federal government's plan to improve nutritional standards is pig breeding. Both boars and sows have been imported. Poultry rearing is also being studied and developed. In areas where disease has always held back the development of livestock, great strides are now being made in the field of animal health. Nigerian trained scientists study the many special problems of animal husbandry in the tropics. Problems that must be solved if the demand of a growing population with rising living standards is to be met. Scientists work to improve vaccines against such diseases as Rhinopest and the infection carried by the testy fly. In the past, cattle could not be bred successfully in regions infested by testy. Now, science may open vast new areas to grazing to increase the nation's food supply. Through the railhead, cattle come from all over the vast plains of the north to be shipped to the southern market. Already, half the cattle go south by train, and this will increase. Droving overland through country with scant pasture means cattle arriving emaciated at the end of the journey. By rail, they reach the market in less than 48 hours, sleek and in prime condition. Each train load, 500 head of cattle. And with them, to guard and look after them, go the herdsman. The tall northerner in his shady hat travels beyond his familiar plains. Now he sees a lot more of his vast and varied country. the north and pigs from the north, from Mina, where a big modern farm is owned jointly by the Northern Region Government and the United Africa Company. Yes, there's everything in the factory, from the latest refrigeration plant to streamlined packing. My job is distribution manager. But I've had to learn all about the products I distribute. To begin with, the carcasses are graded and weighed and placed into refrigerator store. In one day, the plants can cool enough meat for all the size of regular. The butchers are highly skilled men, specialists, all trained right here in the factory. They know how to prepare all the different cuts. Variety, that's good for the appetite and for trade. And quality, that's all important. Nigerians know the value of nutritious food. The men in the factory, the retailers who sell our products, the housewives who prepare the meals and their families who eat them. Meat, fresh. Clean, high quality. The joint put into the machine which rolls it and wraps it in polythene. Five to six pounds of valuable protein per pack. Meeting a growing demand in a growing country. From young and old. From all walks of life. Some cuts are cured by the injection of brine. This makes the meat keep longer and bacon. A different flavor more variety. 
Bacon is vacuum packed, sealed in an airtight wrapping that will keep it fresh and pure. WACS was the first plant in West Africa to use this hygienic method. At every stage, every batch of food is rigorously inspected. The WACS has its own laboratory where checks are carried out to ensure that the highest possible standards of purity are maintained and where the many problems of preparation and preservation are studied. The standards in the laboratory, as with the factory techniques, are comparable with the finest in the world. But interest in hygiene is not confined to the laboratory. On the factory floor, personal cleanliness is part of our regular routine. Everything is examined and checked from the air conditioning plant to individual machines which mix meat in fat, blending them with spices with strange sounding names. Majoron and me, coriander and cloves, and producing a sausage. Sausage, that most universal of products, which people all over the world know and enjoy. Put them in a pan and they sizzle, with a sound like a cheerful chuckle, laughing at their own spicy jokes, full of goodness. That's the message of the sausage. Everyone gets the message. Everyone wants more. And that's good for trade. Good for other people's trade too. The more I distribute, the better for the cattlemen. And when we make dough for pies and sausage rolls, we use Nigerian meal flour and Nigerian palm oil in the fat. More trade for the millers. For the farmers who grow the oil palm, and because these and other materials are locally produced, it means a big saving in foreign exchange. Flour, oil, eggs, sugar, spices and thousands of sides of meat every year. And we expect to double our output when the plant is running at its full capacity. Some of our meat goes are ready to cook. But sausage rolls and pies we cook ourselves. And they go out ready to eat. Part of my job to get these foods out to shops and stores all over the country. So I watch them cook and pack. For when they reach my department, there are batches and serial numbers, packages and cases. And it's a question of seeing that they get to our customers fast and fresh. Another is air transport. Cooked meats are on sale at Port Harcourt, hundreds of miles away, on the same day they leave the factory. Our goods go by sea too. A valuable Nigerian export, which earns foreign currency. Joints of meat, rolls of meat, pre-packed meat, and sausages go out by refrigerated van. 
These men work most of the time in the icy cold storehouses. That's why they are dressed like Arctic explorers. myself on the rounds. A minivan is rather small in amongst the buses and money wagons. So we go carefully. After all, I want to live to draw my attention. This is modern Nigeria. Up-to-date stores selling up-to-date goods. More and more of them labeled made in Nigeria. And with the latest marketing methods, the customer gets top quality goods at reasonable prices. Modern merchandising is fine. But deep down, you know, inside, we are all salesmen. And that's something you get just as well at the old style store. Now the stallholder can sell fine foods hygienically packed. She can make more profit on these customers old and new. Whether it's a big stall, a little street stall, the restaurant, or the nightclub, distribution has to be carefully planned to get the right things to the people who want them when they want them. And that means transport, and the right transport. And here are the rules in the pool again. WACS, like other new enterprises, stimulates the business of assembling vehicles, a rapidly growing industry these days. The plant at Apapa turns out about a thousand vehicles a year. Because of increasing orders, it's employing more and more people. And as the WACS output grows, more vehicles will be needed. Everywhere, more work for more people, more trade, more money to spend. Here's another thing. With its big use of coal storage, WACS has generally helped to stimulate the refrigeration business. At the Alumaco plant, they are fitting out refrigerated vans and making keep cool aluminum containers for bicycles. Or take the bicycle assembly plant for that matter, turning out every sort of cycle. The machine of a thousand and one uses, for pleasure and for work. One of their big markets now is among street salesmen, including meat salesmen. Stop me and buy one. Buy a pie, meals and wheels for busy people and passes by. And at the end of the day, thorough sort of cleanup for the whole plant, so that tomorrow morning we can start fresh on a fresh day's output of fresh foods. Brush, mop, dish cloth, disinfectant, hot water and tea. The day is over. All I share with show you again is Clark and the factory workers go home. Some to rest, others to study, preparing to be big men in their turn. For others, it's out for the evening. All day they've been busy doing all sorts of jobs. And all, in their own way, helping to build the new Nigeria. Converting the resources of a nation into the products of a new age.
bright lights, and merry music. A place to dance and have some fun with friends. To take it easy. People are taking it easy in all the other towns, on the farm, in the fishing villages along the shore, in the timber camps in the great rainforest, around the tin mines up on the plateau. Have a sausage roll. A land at leisure, but tomorrow will be once more a land at work, toiling to fashion.